for sure in engineering can decide with this option. And this option is available on the OUAC website. So we have a lot of great things at Ryerson. We have the academics, but we also have the ability for students to experience outside the classroom. We have different clubs and teams. Um, I was lucky enough to be involved with various teams at Ryerson, and I'm definitely telling you that that is what is one of the amazing things that we have at Ryerson, among others. We have the Rocketry Club, which is where students design and build ro rockets, and they fly them. They get to build rockets. I don't know about you, but that's really cool. You get to, of course, apply your knowledge and have fun with your classmates outside the classroom. As well, the Great Northern Concrete Toboggan Race. I was very lucky to be involved with this team for three years, and we ended up being able to win first place in all of Canada. We got to go all the way to Calgary, and we got to build a concrete toboggan. It might sound silly, why concrete? But we're civil engineers, so we like concrete. We build um, the toboggan out of concrete. We Anything that touches the snow was concrete, so we had our skis. And we had different things as well. We designed the braking system. We designed the steering system. So it's all of those things involved in one project, and it's a lot of fun. We have a concrete canoe. How do you guys think canoe floats in water? Good? No? Well, we did it. We uh, ended up uh, replacing the rocks you see in the concrete with uh, crushed plastic, PVC plastic. So it made it lighter, and it made it float, and we raced it. Um, again, a lot of fun, and you got to build a canoe. We have other things like the Formula or uh, Formula SAE Mini Baja, like I mentioned. You're designing an off-roading vehicle to be as efficient as fast as possible, um, and it's a great opportunity for you to be involved outside the classroom. Uh, and it, being involved in these teams, speaking experience as a previous student and still a student, it's something that makes university a lot more pleasant. Obviously, you're going to have the academics. It's going to be stressful, but it's 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 not stressful when you get involved in things, when you're able to just be like, okay, I'm going to be done with class, and I get to go and get involved with this, and then I get to go and study after. Like, it's a great opportunity for you guys, and I definitely encourage you to get involved with this kind of stuff when you come to Ryerson. So here's an example of the uh, new Baja. There's a student actually working on it right now. And uh, yeah, you can see that they're being involved in every stage um, in, with the design and construction. As well as we also have the popsicle stick bridge building competition. You, you build a bridge out, out of popsicle sticks. It sounds silly, again, but we've had students that made a one kilogram weighted bridge. It held five tons. That student is now working in France as an engineer. So you have a lot of opportunities. Um, it's amazing, amazing what we can do, and uh, it's something definitely to be involved with. As well, as you, I mentioned before, we have the rocketry clubs. It's something that you've been designing and building. And the concrete toboggan. Uh, luckily, I got to race it, and it was a lot of fun. Amazing thing for you to get involved with. We got to go all the way to Calgary, and we pulled out first place for Ryerson and in all of Canada. And the concrete canoe competition. So we're actually floating, I'm not lying to you. We actually floated in concrete, so. Uh, we also have different things. Um, we have uh, student groups. So the main group that you will be meeting when you first come to Ryerson during Frosh Week is the Ryerson Engineering Student Competition. Or sorry, Ryerson Engineering Student Society. My, my apologies. We have different things like Frosh Week. So the first uh, week before school, you'll get involved in different things like that. It's more of a, a social thing to get you introduced to engineering at Ryerson. As well as at, during the year, we have a Ryerson Engineering Competition. So you're able to work on projects and potentially move on to conferences and winning around all of Canada. And Ryerson has actually won in the past few years for an uh, innovative prosthetic arm that biomedical engineering students have been involved with. And we have a bug push. So as you can see in the bottom photo, you have students that are pushing a bug around the quad for 24 hours. It's a charity event. It's a, a lot of fun. Um, actually, just last year, the president of our university came and pushed the bug with the students for five minutes. He had meetings to go to, so we couldn't stay for long. But they push it for 24 hours straight, and they raise thousands of dollars for charity. So it's something you can be involved with. So why do you guys think you need to come to Ryerson? Well, this is what we're telling you why you need to come to Ryerson. Ryerson has been accredited for all eight engineering programs, and this means that you will be able to get a license after you graduate. 
you're able to put your stamp on something that you approve as a biomedical engineer or as a civil engineer. As well, we have the internship programs that we have. You're able to take off um, a year of school after your third year and you're able to work in the industry for from 18 to 16 months and you're able to get that opportunity to potentially have a full-time job after you graduate. As well, we have the specialization program in management. So op op optional specialization management sciences. So you're able to take um, extra courses and you're able to graduate with a certificate in management. So you have that business background when getting an engineering degree. And it's definitely important when you're entering in the world of business. As an engineer, you need to have that business side as well. So this is a really great opportunity for students um, when you enter a graduate. And of course, we have labs. Um, I've had experience with various types of labs, and I'm telling you, it's an amazing opportunity. You talk to students from different schools, and they, they're shocked by the fact that you actually make your own concrete. You make your own asphalt. You put your hands on experience, um, applying the knowledge that you learned in class. It's a lot of fun as well. It's, it's able, you're able to get out of the classroom and, and, and just apply the theory you have in your brain. Rather than just having someone talk at you, you're able to be like, okay, I know how to do this, and you work with it, and you understand it a lot better. So Ryerson definitely prides itself on uh, the hands-on experience that we offer our students. So do you have a question? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's co-op. It's, it's, uh, you're able to take off after your third year. You can take up a, a, a co-op or internship program um, you, from 8 to 16 months. It depends on what the company is offering. And you work. So you're pretty much what would be your fourth year. Ms. Jane, could you please pick up a call on 101, Ms. Jane? What would be your fourth year will become that term of uh, working. And then you come back after that term of working, so for 8 to 16 months. And then you come back for your fourth year and you finish your degree. And it's a great opportunity because you're able to say, okay, so I worked with you for almost a year. Are there any opportunities for me? So you already have that connection with a, a company. So it's a great opportunity for you. Is that okay? Sorry. Is that for No, no, no. It's for every, everyone. Um, I know for in civil, students have gone to, there's a girl action that just came back from Elston. And Elston is one of the biggest construction companies in all of Canada. Um, they do everything from the Alberta tar sands, they're actually building, they're involved with building uh, the new Ryerson building. We have a, a new student uh, building being built, it's going to be done in about a few years. And uh, yeah, they're involved in everything and it's a good opportunity for you to get involved with. And you have an opportunity with companies, we have Bombardier, we have Alastan, we have um, Ontario Energy, we have all these companies. And we're in downtown, their offices are down the street from us. So you have that like central hub to have that experience. Um, as well, so this is the main important thing that you guys need to know is, of course, admission requirements. So the first and foremost, you need your OSSD. You need your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, so you need to graduate. And uh, a lot of, you think that it's a silly thing to mention, but a lot of students actually, there's a hiccup. For example, you forget to hand in your volunteer hours. Something so small, but that prevents you from getting your, your diploma. So make sure that everything is fine, that you have all the requirements to graduate. As well, you, uh, you need uh, six uh, grade 12 U or M courses with a competitive overall average of 80% or plus. So this means that the, you can choose um, six 12 or U or M courses that you take in your grade 12 year um, and they can go towards your overall average and that average for our requirements is 80% or, or plus. So the, the low 80s is what we require from students. Um, as well, we have prerequisites you have to have to enter into engineering. You have um, English, so you have your English um, course, you have your calculus for you, you have your uh, functions for you, you have chemistry for you, and you have physics for you. Now, there has been a change from previous years. Calculus is a requirement now. Calculus was not a requirement pr previously, but now it's a requirement. So you need to have calculus to enter into our program. And as you can see, you need to have a minimum of 70%. So not 69, not 69.5, 70% to be eligible to get an offer from the university. So make sure that your grades are in line and you follow these, these um, requirements. 
and you will be in the a positive when applying to uh, our programs. So the application process, uh, first and foremost, I don't know, have your guidance counselors talked to you yet about the OUAC application process yet? Not yet? Okay, so pretty much it's, it's where you go to apply for universities in Ontario. So you have to go online, your guidance counselors will obviously go over this with you, um, and you, in this case, you select Ryerson, and depending on which program you want to enter into. So, and as I mentioned before, undeclared is an option. So when you're going to apply for Ryerson, you have the ninth option of undeclared, and you can apply to that if you're not sure about which engineering you want to go into. Um, just for your knowledge, make sure that you apply through OUAC by July 16th, or sorry, January 16th. Uh, that's the deadline. Um, as well, so when you apply through OUAC, you have, uh, we're going to be in contact with you as soon as you apply. Everything is through email, so make sure you check your junk mail just in case because sometimes you have um, the spam filter. So you will be in contact with us once you apply, and then you'll be able to view your um, admissions through the Choose Ryerson portal, and this will be all related to you in an email once your uh, application has been um, acknowledged. Uh, and then you can see updates about your admission status and different things like that. And uh, make sure that when this all this happens, you're meeting the requirements you're supposed to have. Even if you were to get an offer, you can't slip in your grade. You have to make sure you maintain those requirements and come in September and you'll be a Ryerson student. Sorry? Yeah, choose Ryerson portal. It's that, that's the portal that we have. It's the portal that we have on our website. So once we um, let you know that we have seen your application, we'll be in contact with you about um, your admission um, status, and you can check your status on that portal. It'll be all related to you in the email, but just to let you know, everything now is by the internet. Um, you won't be getting anything in the mail. A lot of universities, or most universities now, deal everything online, so you'll get that information. Um, so Ryerson has a lot of student support. We have different things, well, specifically for engineering. We have the first year um, common engineering office, which gives you the support for different things like courses and uh, counseling. They have uh, opportunities so that if you're struggling first year, you don't know if you have to drop a course or you're missing a course, this office gives you that. It's specifically geared to first year engineers. So you have the support, so don't worry, you're not going to be a fish in water by yourself, people are going to be there to help you. So as I said, you have academic advisors, you have personal counsel, counselors, you have communication proficiency resource path, which means that you have the opportunities to um, improve your English. As when you come into engineering, you ha are required, it's actually your, during frosh week, before you enter into the program, you have to take an English proficiency test. And this means that you can't study for it, it's just they will give you a question and you just have to, for a half an hour, show them your train of thought. It's just um, testing you on your English proficiency. So we have these opportunities for you to be successful in that. As well, we have a transition program. So when you're at Ryerson and you're the first semester, it's really difficult and you fail a course. This transition program helps you catch up so you're not behind. Because, of course, when you're in your first year, you need those requirements to move on to second year. This program allows you, so if that were to happen, and it's not an embarrassment for that to happen, a lot of engineers go through that, we have this program where you're able to stay on track and not fall behind. Um, and then we have an early intervention program where we have um, advisors that monitor students, and if they see that for example, you're slipping in your grades, someone will contact you and talk to you about if you need help, different things like that. So it's a very, um, it's a community. It allows you to excel and be successful um, no matter who you are, no matter which engineering you choose, it's, it's all about for you to succeed. And we have women in engineering. I'm really happy that I see girls in the audience. Um, Make sure you get into engineering, it's a really great opportunity for females. Never be afraid to be in engineering because we're very valuable in engineering. The guys and the girls are very valuable in engineering. Um, so we have a women in engineering opportunity. We have this, it's a student society 
run by students as well as we have a professor that an advisor and it's an opportunity for girls to be involved with different events geared towards females in engineering. So actually, we have an upcoming event, Go Into Girl event, so it's in female engineers encouraging young, younger women to get into engineering, and it's a very encouraging and positive environment for females in engineering. So uh, we have various uh, scholarships that you would be interested in. So as you can see in the chart, you have uh, your various averages that equates to different amounts of money you can get. So if you're, for example, at 80%, you can get up to $500 every year. Um, but again, you have to renew this. So that grade has to be maintained when you get into university as well. And you get up to $16,000 overall, depending on your average. As well, we have engineering-specific awards, as you can see in the lower half. Um, and they're for various uh, different aspects. So some uh, awards deal with leadership. And academic. Some award, uh, awards deal with certain grade points or certain financial need. So all of this is offered to you as, an, as a student going into engineering. Um, as well, if you have any more questions about awards, you can just go to our Ryerson website and search for awards and scholarships and anything like that. You can get more information about what you can get when you get into Ryerson. And we really encourage you guys to come to our campus. We have various uh, campus tours that we have from Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. We also have a Discover Ryerson event. So um, actually this upcoming November is our first Discover Ryerson event of the school year. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to go to um, the mechanical engineering group uh, department and go and ask a professor and students. We have that available to you at the school and you're able to get more knowledge and to make a more educated decision on what you want to do. As well, we have various events, as I mentioned, the Go Lunch Girl event. As well, um, just the past year, I don't know if any of you heard about the design on Dundas. Um, we invited various high school students to come to the Dundas Square, where we show what students have done in engineering with different projects that we've done. So those are amazing things that you can get involved with and, and hear about. And it's an amazing opportunity for you guys. So even before coming into Ryerson, you have a lot of opportunity to experience engineering uh, before you're an actual student. So please follow us. We have a Twitter and Facebook account. Um, just search us online. I know everyone has Facebook. Um, just search us online, ask questions, different things like that. See what we're up to. Our Ryerson page is continuously updating events that we're involved with. They have a lot of great pictures and great videos and stuff that you can see what we do. Um, yeah, so I really encourage you guys to come to the university, to talk to us now, have any questions. Um, and just make sure that you know what we offer you and um, really hope that you guys are excited to come to Ryerson and if you have any questions, ask us now or email us or call us at the summer. I really thank you for your attention. You guys are really great. And yeah, if you guys have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's more, it's more software based. I'm not sure about specific courses. I know for first year, you do programming. That's a core element to computer uh, engineering. You do the C, C plus programming. Um, I'm not sure what specifics, but you do a lot of programming. You do different things. Um, you also can do digital systems. It's all incorporated into computer engineering. But specifically courses, I'm not sure. I do know that you do software courses. You do Java, you do C++, you do different things like that. But for first year specifically, everyone does a programming course so that you get a taste of what you're going to be doing in computer engineering. Sorry, hi. Hi. Uh, just a clarification question on the admissions. Mm -hmm. um, I think I know the answer, but I'll ask it anyway. If one of my prerequisite subjects is below 70, but my overall average is 86, 87, am I going to be considered? Uh, no, you have to meet all the requirements. Every single one? Yeah, so you have to have, in every prerequisite I mentioned, so physics, uh, chemistry, English, advanced functions, calculus, you have to have those five of them, and calculus specifically, make sure that you have calculus. They all have to be 70 plus. And then your overall average, again, your overall average does not have to include um, uh, your prerequisites. It can include your best six. 
um, you or M grade 12 course system. So it doesn't have to include the prerequisites, but those prerequisites do have to be met at 7 years. Is this only for Ryerson? Yeah, Ryerson. Only for nerd? I mean engineering? Yeah. Is it for the other courses? This is just engineering. We can't speak uh, for any other university or um, program. It's just engineering at Ryerson. So just so you know, and it's all on those pamphlets that you guys have. So you just to clarify, so you guys aren't confused or any information is misunderstood. What's, what's usually the acceptance average for civil? Uh, for to expect for when you apply is 80 percent, low 80 percent, so 80 plus. Um, previous years it's been lower, but it's all dependent on the students coming in. So we expect that it's going to be 80 plus. So aim for low 80s. Obviously, you always want to aim higher. You never want to settle. So always aim for higher as much as you can. And yeah. Do you guys have any other questions? Okay, well, just, Thank you. yeah, if you guys have any more questions, email us or call us. Yeah. Right. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Wait,